Okay, so before diving into the demo itself, um, I want to walk through an overview of this workflow. Here is our overall workflow. We'll start here with our model. So this model uh, is fed questions and gives responses. And these question response pairs make up your data set. And this is your model that you hope to eventually be able to deploy into production. If this is the first time you're working on building this model, you might start with an off-the-shelf model, such as GPT-4 or Mistral. You can also start with an OSS benchmark. As we go through the data development workflow, you will fine tune this model to improve its performance until you're satisfied and ready to deploy. So for clarity throughout the rest of this demo, I will call this model the fine tuned model. And the question we want to answer today is, how do I know how well my model is performing? The common approaches to evaluation right now are using an OSS benchmark, manual annotation, and using another LLM as a judge for your LLM. Snorkel effectively draws on the strengths of all three of these approaches, which you will see throughout this overview. So the first step to understand how your model is performing is to create a golden data set. And this is done through manual annotation. To scale this up for evaluation, you then programmatically encode your labeling preferences into functions using snorkel flow. So you can start by using another LLM here we see GPT-4 as a judge for your LLM. You can then add additional signal about your preferences. So for example, here, we don't want our model to mention any of our competitors. Having these labeling functions allows you to scale up your annotation reliably, efficiently, and traceably. You can then use these sources of signal, both manual and programmatic, to train a quality model. And this quality model learns your preferences. So given any data point, it can output a label and confidence in that label. This allows your labeling to scale beyond your current data to any future data you might want to use as well. Once you have some labeled data, you look at your question response pairs and segment the data by question categories you care about. This creates those slices that you care about. So here we have a slice that contains all the administrative data or all the data in Spanish, et cetera. This will give you a more fine-grained understanding of where your model is performing well. Finally, you can calculate metrics to see how your model is performing. And Snorkel Flow uh, allows you to see your metrics across all of these slices. And this provides a fine-grained and actionable evaluation report. Snorkel supports many different metrics. Uh, here we see acceptance rate, and it also allows you to define your own custom metrics. From here, you can dive into the data, focus on specific slices, do further data development on these slices, and curate new data sets for fine tuning. And then you start the whole loop over again. So now that we understand the, this overall evaluation workflow, let's dive into the demo. For our demo today, we are going to be working at Acme Credit Services, and we are building a co-pilot called Jarvis. This here is Jarvis. Jarvis is designed to answer financial service questions to help our customer service agents. So when a customer poses a question, Jarvis will then generate a factual, grounded, helpful response. So we'll start by being here in our pre-production environment. And we've been noticing some odd behavior from this current version of Jarvis. So I will show us some examples. Um, we can ask a question like, how is my credit score calculated? Since this is a pretty generic question, we can expect a relatively good response out of the box. And sure enough, you can see here that Jarvis is giving correct percentages for the calculation of FICO scores. So that's great. I'll now ask something a bit more specific to Acme. Um, I have some weird clothing charges on my credit report. How can I dispute? As we look at this response, we start to see some problems. First of all, our fine-tuned model Jarvis is talking about stock purchases. I asked about clothing purchases, so this is a hallucination. We can also see a recommendation to contact the SEC and file a police report. As someone who's worked with Acme in customer service, I know that this isn't what you want to be doing. There's a very prescribed set of steps you would do inside of Acme's website to actually solve this problem. So. We know our chatbot has some weaknesses 
and now need to figure out how to evaluate and fix those weaknesses. So we gathered a representative data set of question response pairs from Jarvis, and now we're going to hop into Snorkel Flow to manually annotate some of this data. Here we're in Snorkel Flow's annotation suite. The subject matter expert can read the prompt and the prompt prefix, can read through this response, and also look at any of the context that the model retrieved to help it answer the, answer the question. Then, after looking at all of these pieces, the subject matter expert can indicate if this response is correct, polite, well-structured, and accept it, or if not, and reject it. For this use case, I've, I've created a simple accept reject label schema, but this is also fully customizable. So you can pick whatever labels you want, have free text labels. Let's go through and annotate a couple of these data points. This, this response about raising my credit score looks pretty good. If I go to my next one, this response also looks good. My goodness, it is quite long. Okay. Personally, I don't want to read this whole response, and I can imagine that our customers wouldn't either. So I'm actually going to tag this response as a little bit too verbose, but it does have pretty good content. I'll now go to the next data point. Okay. And this response, I'm noticing that it's a huge wall of text, and I actually kind of liked that this response seg segmented it into bullet points that helped me skim it a lot faster. Whereas this one is harder to read. So I'm just gonna leave a comment here. I would prefer a structured list, right? So I'm acting here as a subject matter expert going through and annotating these documents. And you can see that not only am I checking for correctness, but I'm also making sure that these responses align with Acme's preferences for how they want their chatbot to respond. You can imagine that these preferences could vary company to company. Some companies might prefer a formal academic tone, others might want a casual light tone. Something that we feel very strongly about at Snorkel is that to build a successful, to build successful machine learning initiatives in the enterprise, generative or predictive, you need a single platform where the domain experts and the data scientists can collaborate. And this is because the input from those domain experts is critical to tuning these systems right. So you can imagine that I keep annotating and this gets tedious pretty quickly. For Acme, this approach is problematic because it's slow, expensive, and not scalable. So we can pretend now that I've annotated about 10% of my test data to create this um, ground truth golden data set. Next, I want to encode this subject matter expertise into labeling functions so that we can evaluate the other 90%. You can think of labeling functions as the rationale behind why you want to accept a response or reject it. So I'll hop into our studio page of Snorkel to encode some of that. And we'll start actually by using LLM as a judge to create a baseline for us. So here um, I wrote this uh, labeling function to get us started and I'll show you how I did that. In Snorkel Flow, we have this prompt zone. It allows you to prompt an LLM. So here we are prompting GPT-4, but we're integrated with all the major model providers and you can also add your own custom integrations there. And we're starting with a basic prompt. If the response answers the question, then label accept. And we're looking at, at how it's doing across uh, several of these data points. You can see um, that Snorkel Flow has very easy native support for this approach. However, using LM as a judge has some drawbacks. It's often noisy and prone to similar, similar error modes as your own fine-tuned model. You can see here that the precision is not great. So Snorkel effectively addresses these drawbacks by using this LLM as a labeling function instead of just on its own. So instead of relying on this LLM as the entire evaluation report approach, we can use it as another signal in addition to all of the signals that our subject matter experts are giving us. So we'll continue to gather some of that signal. For example, something I noticed while evaluating while looking through this uh, data set is that the our fine-tuned model sometimes seems to truncate the response. So I'm going to write another labeling function. And you can see we have lots of different templates uh, that you can do here. I'm going to say that we don't want our LLM to truncate our responses. So if it's super short, we want to reject it. 
Um, and I can name this so that I can understand what it is going back. So I'll say reject truncated responses. And now we can look at this. And you'll see, okay, this is exactly what I had noticed. Sometimes this makes no sense. This is an apparent error mode of our current uh, fine-tuned Jar Jarvis model. So we don't want our model to be doing this. And so I'll add this labeling function as a source of signal. We also want to ensure that our responses adhere to corporate guidelines and policies. So we talked about when we were annotating that we prefer structured responses to huge walls of text. So let's write a regex labeling function. And here I'll say if it matches the pattern of a list, then we'll accept it. And here I can name it accept structured lists. And let's see how that does. Okay, awesome. So you see here that it's pulling out any response that has a structured list. And it's saying, this is great. This is some signal that we want. Um, so I'll create this labeling function as well. So you can see now, instead of having to manually label all of those data points, Snorkel Flow has labeled them for me. Once a user has written several labeling functions here, um, these functions are combined uh, to create programmatic labels for the entire data set. These programmatic labels are then used to train a simple model that we call a quality model. And let's train one here. So you see, you can pick uh, a model architecture. We'll just go with logistic regression to keep it simple. I can name it my quality model and I can select what fields I want it to train over. This quality model, simply put, is a model that looks at a data point so in this case, an instruction context response triple, and then returns a label with some degree of confidence. So in this use case, the quality model will look at a data point and say, okay, I'm 83% sure we should accept this data point, or I'm 90% sure we should reject this data point. We then use this quality model to evaluate our fine-tuned model. One of the things um, that's unique with generative use cases is that the manual labels collected by domain experts are effectively thrown out with each iteration of fine tuning. And this is because when you fine tune your model, it generates new and hopefully better responses to the same questions. So now you have an entirely new data set and the old labels no longer apply. So if you relied on manual annotation, you'd have to restart the annotation process with each fine tuning iteration. To avoid this, we rely on the quality model because it can give us labels without requiring new manual annotations. Whenever we, re we receive updated data from a new fine tuning iteration, we can simply apply the labeling functions to the new data and train the quality model on the newly created programmatic labels. This allows us to generalize our labeling preferences to new data without requiring any new manual annotation. This is a technique that the leading model providers are using and talking about in their research. Not only has Snorkel been doing this for years, but Snorkel Flow enables you to have complete control over training and adjusting your own quality model. And that is, this quality model is integrated seamlessly into your generative AI workflow. So now that we have our quality model, let's take a look at our evaluation reports. And you can navigate by going to evaluate. So here is our evaluation report. And we have two numbers here. We're using the metric acceptance rate, um, and that is the percentage of responses generated by your fine-tuned model that are deemed good or acceptable. So we have an acceptance rate based on the manually annotated ground truth, and then we have one determined by the quality model. So this one is taking into account many sources of labeling signal, and this is only taking into account our manual annotations. And these two numbers are helpful to evaluate helpful to me to evaluate how my fine-tuned model uh, is doing overall, right? We're, we're somewhere between a, a 55 and 60% um, acceptance rate for this, this Jarvis V1. But I'm still left a little bit in the dark about where my chatbot Jarvis is responding well and where Jarvis might be struggling. To actually build robust generative AI in the enterprise, we need to not only ensure that our solution is globally highly accurate, but it's also highly accurate across important data slices. As Vincent explained earlier, data slices are an important piece of the evaluation suite within our product. They help us identify the distribution of our data so we can ensure we're generating high quality outputs 
from many different categories within our data set. These slices can be thought of as subsets of our data that we care about and model performance on. Often slices are tied to business objectives or specific divisions or departments within the company. So I will walk through creating these slices and then how to create custom fine-grained evaluation reports using these slices. So let's jump over into our integrated Jupyter notebook to walk through slice cre creation. And all the tools we saw for writing labeling functions are also available for writing slicing functions. So prompts, embeddings, heuristics, like dictionaries, keywords, regular expressions. Typically, these slices are written over the prompt inputs. So in this case, over the questions field. As our first example here, let's dive into the Spanish slice. Acme is thinking about expanding to Latin America. So we want to track our performance on responses in Spanish. And I wrote a function here um, that if this fast text model um, predicts, predicts that the language of the question response pair is Spanish, then we want to put that data point in the Spanish slice. Let's also walk through, we can walk through identity theft. So the creation of this slice is motivated, motivated by some of our competitors receiving negative publicity about how their chatbots handled customers dealing with identity theft. So Acme's CEO recently asked us how Jarvis performs when asked questions about identity theft. In order to answer this question, our data science team decided to create a slice of all of the data points relating to identity theft. Now that we've defined um, some of these data slices, we can create a new evaluation report to get a more fine-grained look um, at how our fine-tuned model Jarvis is performing across uh, these, these different slices that we care about. Okay, so looking at this new evaluation report, there are a couple of things that are jumping out to me immediately. First of all, I'm seeing that we don't have any Spanish data in our evaluation data set. And this makes sense. Historically, all of Acme's customers have spoken English. So now we know we should probably ask Jarvis some questions in Spanish and get some responses to add to the data set. Once we do that, we can get some baseline metrics here for how Jarvis is performing um, in Spanish. The second thing I really wanna pay attention to here is this identity theft slice. And you can see that even though we have a 50, 60% acceptance rate overall, we're doing terribly on identity theft questions. Now we know maybe why our, our customers, um, our competitors have ha been having trouble um, with these questions. It looks like they don't work out of the box. So I've identified a slice that's performing poorly. And now there are several things I could do. I could go ask domain experts to write some gold standard responses for how to respond when a customer asks about identity theft. I could upsample the representation of this slice in the curated data set for the next iteration of fine tuning. I could go back into Snorkel Flow Studio and look at all of the data points that are in this slice and see if clicking through those data points, I can see some common mistakes and write labeling functions to help train our model to avoid those common mistakes. For the sake of time, we'll just say that we looked at the data, we corrected some error modes, and then we went through this fine tuning iteration. Once we have um, the new data from the new fine tuned model, we can then view the new evaluation report in our evaluation page. You can go check out the other webinar for those details. And I went ahead and did this for us in advance so that we can peek at the results. So here we can compare models and we'll compare the first iteration to this next iteration of our fine-tuned model. And you'll notice that we don't have as much manual annotation for this newest version, but we can get a sense of how our model is performing using our quality model that scales uh, to new data sets. And look at that, our generative AI workflow is making progress in the right direction. Not only is the overall performance improving, but the slice we care the most about, this identity theft slice, has been improved by 55%. A couple of these other slices, verbose and competitors, were slices that we wanted to drive down. These were error modes. We did not want verbose responses or responses that mentioned competitors. So it's actually great to see that we're seeing less data uh, in those slices. So here you can see this fine grain evaluation report that gives you real insight into how your model is performing and how it's improving with each iteration, not just overall, but in the places that you really care about. On that note, it's time to go write your CEO an email and tell him that you improved 
identity theft questions by 55% and get yourself promoted.